Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. So let's get started. I actually had to write everything down on yellow paper because I was at work. <laughs> uh, okay, so the very first question is from Laura Greenfield. Is the walk the best starter piece for Chanel under 3000? Um, I would probably have to say yes. Uh, I think it, the walk or the wallet on chain is a great bag, uh, or accessory. Depends how you look at it. The versatility of it is absolutely, I mean, fantastic. The fact that you can use it in so many different aspects of your life is, is great. Uh, plus I think if I'm not mistaken, depending upon which one you purchase, uh, I think the classic quilted is 2100. So it is uh, fairly underneath the, the $3,000 mark. But if you're looking at something that might be just a tad over $3,000, that is another fantastic piece. I would have to say it is the uh, GST or the Grand Shopping Tote. I absolutely love that bag. Um, and I think it's maybe, I think it's it's $2,900 before tax. So I think it's like Thirty-two, so just a tad over three thousand, and I think it is absolutely fantastic. So if you need a lot of versatility and you don't mind a smaller bag, I would go for the walk. Otherwise, if you spend just a little bit more cash, uh, you can really go for the GST, which is fantastic because that is the bag that I'm using today, and I cannot stop to, like looking at it, thinking about it. But great question. Uh, all right. Uh, Riam Jara, Jarasi. So sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So they have four questions. Uh, how many wallets do you own? Hmm. I have a total of, I have a Prada, a Louis Vuitton organizer wallet, three Josephines and an insulate wallet. If you don't count the zippy coin purses, but if you do, I have, I have, maybe a hair under 10. Um, does your wallet have to match your handbag? No. Uh, I actually, it depends. Sometimes I have played the matchy matchy game and uh, it tends to drive me crazy by the end of the day or the end of the week. Uh, but I really like to add a pop of color into uh, some of the bags. For example, all my Chanel bags are black and uh, sometimes I like to put multicolor Louis Vuitton inside of there just because it adds that much more fun to the bag in my opinion. Uh, especially if it's something that I'm going to be pulling uh, out of the bag and using, you know, a lot throughout uh, when I'm shopping or things like that. I think it looks great. Uh, I just don't want everything to be all the same. I like that. I really, really appreciate that pop of color. <laughs> um, all right. Which one is your favorite and why? Hmm. Which one is my favorite and why? That's a good question. Uh, I'd have to say... Probably the Josephine in the monogram print uh, with the red interior. And I don't think they make that anymore. Uh, they actually started making them a little bit different. And I think now there's a fuchsia and there's a few other different colors. But the one that I have, the red monogram or the monogram with the red interior, uh, they do not make. But I absolutely love that wallet. Uh, I love the fact that it has the little red button on the front. Uh, it has the red interior on the inside. It just adds it to me. It really livens up the, uh, the monogram print. Uh, sometimes it could just be, you know, just the monogram print by itself is beautiful. But when you add a pop of color, especially that beautiful red, I think it looks just exquisite. So that's got to be my favorite. Plus it's the Josephine and it's very thin. It, it fits all my essentials and it is a great, great wallet. Uh, all right. What crate, what is in your criteria when looking for a new wallet? Uh, I look for a few different things. Uh, I, I have a Louis Vuitton organizer wallet and even though it is beautiful, it is extremely big and, uh, I don't tend to use it as much as I'd like. Uh, and I really look at how much organization the wallet has, how much security the wallet has. Um, I'm also a big fan of the interior lining. Uh, some of the Prada wallets that I've seen before, and I think I've told you guys before, I'm not a big fan of the way that the Prada lining looks on some of the items. To me, it looks like it's, it looks like it's a replica. So sometimes the inner, uh, the lining is something that I look for. Uh, if it's leather versus canvas versus, uh, just 
just the, just in general, the lining. And also if it has a zipper, how smooth is the zipper? Because sometimes some of these fabulous fashion houses have beautiful wallets, but the zippers are so, so annoying. You're sitting there trying to open it up. And I just think if I'm trying to get in and out of my wallet in a hurry, or if I, you never know, if you're sitting there, I mean, f fidgeting with the uh, with the zipper, it's going to drive you crazy. Maybe it's just me. It just tends to drive me absolutely up the wall. So a smooth zipper and also the hardware. Does the hardware look dull? Does it really, um, does it make it look uh, as luxurious as I'd like? Is it worth the price? So I really take in a lot into account when I'm purchasing a new wallet. As I said before, especially because you're going to be pulling that out of your wallet, out of your bag and using it daily. So, um, I guess I have a quite a, quite a large criteria when it comes to wallets, <laughs> uh, but great question. Uh, all right, next one. And I apologize. Um, I, I don't have any, um, any pictures to show you guys. I just have been trying to crank these videos out and of course my iPad is dead. As always. <laughs> uh, all right. So next one is from Crystal Lee. What do you think about the new Neverfull and the price increase due to the pochette it comes with? Um, and I believe uh, last time I saw the Neverfull MM retails for $1,260 here in the States. And when I purchased uh, my Neverfull, I think the most I paid was maybe $800 if not seven seventy five, So it's quite a difference. Uh, obviously more than, you know, anywhere from $400 to $500. And, um, I just think I absolutely love the Neverfull. Uh, I don't like a few things on the new one and I, I really don't think that it justifies the price in my opinion. I know a lot of people are 50-50 on the Neverfulls. Either you love it or you hate it. And uh, I don't necessarily hate it. However, I don't think that that little pochette, which you cannot use as a clutch because it only has one end. Or you can use it as a clutch, but it doesn't have... Uh, it doesn't have hardware on both ends, so you'd actually be able to wear it like a mini pochette. Uh, I don't think that that little pochette that is very thin justifies the price whatsoever. Obviously, the rest of the bag is the same as a normal, uh, older version of a Neverfull MM. So for me to want to pay an extra $500 for that, I there is no way whatsoever. Uh, but then again, I purchased my all my Neverfulls quite some time ago, so the price difference is a big difference. I think before uh, the price increase, or not the price increase, before they revamped the Neverfull, I if I... If I'm not mistaken, I think they were 900. So even still, $300 for a pochette that's this big, and you can't really use it as anything else. It's a little bit on the thin side. I personally don't think it justifies it, uh, and I also don't like the interior of the of the Neverfull. I loved the cursive interior and uh, just the little extras that it had on the inside lining, and now it doesn't have that. Uh, so for that reason. I don't, uh, I don't think so. But then again, I am, uh, <laughs> I like my old one. So I have a little bit of a, of a biased opinion on it. <laughs> uh, okay. And jazz 1974, if you could only have one Louis Vuitton bag, which one would it be? Ooh, good question. Hmm. If I can only have one, I'd probably have to pick Oh man, this is a good question. <laughs> I'd probably have to pick my Speedy 30 in Demi Azure just because it holds for me the most sentimental value. I don't think I could ever part with that bag. So it'd have to be the Speedy 30 in the Demi Azure because I think I've told you guys before, every single time I look at that bag, I just remember walking down Champs Elysees in the middle of November, uh, with, you know, I was wearing my, uh, I just remember everything that I was wearing and you guys know I have my super sniffer <laughs> and I just remember the smell of Paris and 
I will never, ever forget that. So every time I look at that bag, every time I use that bag, it just reminds me of how happy I was that day or that vacation. And uh, I, I absolutely love it. So the Demi Azor in the, in the, although speeding, the Demi Azor in the 30. Uh, great question. Uh, okay. LV Addict. What do you think about the cosmetic case in Rose Indian? I absolutely love the Vernie uh, Rose Indian uh, color for the cosmetic case. I've actually been thinking about purchasing one. I'm kind of hoping that they come out with a different pink, uh, but the pink is a uh, very... Goodness, I wish I had pictures to show you guys. I totally failed. Uh, I, it's, it's almost like a deep raspberry deep fuchsia. It's not a fuchsia. It's just a beautiful color. And I think it's great adding a uh, cosmetic case with vernis. I think it looks fantastic in the bag, especially like I said before, talking about pop of color. I think it looks great, especially if you have a lot of other monogram or maybe just another print that you have another canvas and you just add that piece, it really stands out. Uh, and I think it looks great, especially if you're one to carry uh, a, a lot of items such as beauty items in the cosmetic case. Um, I think it looks great. So I think, I, I say go for it. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Melissa Bailey. I'm thinking about purchasing the chain wallet, but can't find reviews on it. I have an Alma PM and I'm concerned it might be too big for the bag. Uh, and once again, I wish I had a picture to show you guys. The Chain Wallet, uh, I believe it retails for $1,140 here in the States. And if I'm not mistaken, the measurements are 7.5 inches in length, 4 inches in height, and... I think it was about an inch, or maybe inch and a half in depth. Uh, and uh, I, you know what? I haven't seen too many reviews on YouTube either. And I think it is a great, uh, it is a great piece. It is very comparable to a Chanel wallet on chain. It's the same concept. I think uh, the chain wallet is a little bit smaller, so it would be able to fit in your Alma. However, I think it's one of those bags or one of those items that you would want to carry just as an, uh, an SLG on its own. So I would carry it as I would a uh, wallet on chain from Chanel. But it would fit in there. I believe the Alma is 10. No, it's not 10 inches. Maybe it's about 12 inches in width. So it would fit in there no problem. But like I said, that's one of those items. It's such a, uh, like a statement piece that you would want to really bring it out and use it as uh, just its SLG on its own. But I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Mm, all right. Uh, beautiful Kiss 21... 22110. <laughs> I know you kept on selling your Chanel GST. How do you feel about it now? How do you feel about the eventual sag of the bag? Um, okay, so those of you that have been with me for a while, I purchased the GST last year. I returned it because <laughs> I had buyer's remorse. What is it about Chanel? I keep having buyer's remorse. I don't know why. Uh, but And then I purchased it again. I think it was February of this year. And I am since in love with it. Uh, even back when, when after I returned it, I could not stop thinking about it. And uh, luckily, the price increase hadn't happened. So I was excited that I was able to get it for the same price that I got it initially. And I absolutely love this bag. And I'm actually going to show you guys. Because I have it in the flesh. <laughs> but here it is. I absolutely love this. I see that it's kind of developed a little bit more of a sheen. And this is the black caviar with the gold tone hardware. And I absolutely love it. As you can see, all the grain details on there. And so far, uh, it has a little bit of a sag right here. Nothing too bad. Uh, but... I I really, I mean, I cannot say enough about this bag. It tends to get a little bit on the heavier side sometimes, uh, but I think it is absolutely beautiful. It is gorgeous. So I cannot imagine my collection without it. And I talk about it all the time. I bring it out. I would honestly have to say that the Chanel GST is probably my go-to bag for Chanel just because it is great. It fits everything. So I absolutely love it. Um, this one made me laugh. <laughs> Bernadette Sombrano. 
what do you use to make your teeth white? <laughs> um, I actually, I <laughs> have a little bit of a phobia when it comes to teeth. Uh, I am a tooth person. I have a tooth fetish. Uh, it's one of the things that I notice the most on people when I meet them or when I see them. So I really try to take as much care of my teeth as I possibly can. Sorry, I just keep laughing at the, at the, uh, at the question because when I was writing it down, one of my coworkers <laughs> was laughing and they said, "See, see, you have pretty teeth, Minnie." But anyways, uh, I just uh, I. I, I floss daily. I um, use Colgate uh, Total Complete Toothpaste. And from time to time, I will use Crest White Strips, although I don't like to use them so often because they really tend to um, make my teeth extremely sensitive. And then when that happens, I use Sensodyne. But <laughs> uh, I, that's crazy that I have a, a tooth fetish and that someone else uh, would say would say something to that effect. Uh, but um, what else? Uh, yeah. And I think a, a while ago, this isn't the question, but a while ago, someone asked me uh, how long I had braces for. And I have actually never had braces. I always wanted braces. At one point, uh, I know it's going to sound kind of dirty, but I put, when I was younger, I put, <laughs> I put paper clips in my teeth. I kind of stretched them out or I cleaned them out so that they were flat, not flat, but they were um, straight. And I'd put them in my teeth so it looked like a retainer because all of my friends had uh, <laughs> had braces and I always wanted them, but I never got them. I still could use them on my lower teeth, but I don't know. <laughs> I think they're, they're going to stay the way they are, <laughs> but uh, that's all I use. So Colgate total complete um, religiously and uh, Crest white strips from time to time. Okay. Uh, Brenda Felicia, I want to get myself a Neverfull MM. What print do you prefer for it to be used as an everyday bag? Okay, so uh, this is a very good question. I actually, you guys are going to be very surprised. Uh, normally, I would say the Damier Ben would be the best print to go for because you don't have to be as careful because it has the, uh, the treated leather. However, for my everyday, out of all my Neverfulls, if I was to pick one to just use and I I don't baby it at all whatsoever, it is actually the Demi Azure. Uh, when I first started using it, uh, the patina process took quite some time, but then once it got that honey golden patina, it is a little bit on the dirtier side on the inside interior, but I absolutely love that bag. I I can honestly tell you guys, I do not baby the bag. And some people would think that that's a little bit ridiculous because De Demi Azur, you have to be careful because of color transfer, but I don't. I literally just throw it on my shoulder. I've thrown it on the couch, on a chair. I'm a little bit more careless with the Neverfull in the Demi Azur print. Uh, but if I was going to recommend one for, you said, as an everyday bag... And you're maybe not as uh, <laughs> as crazy as I am to use the Demi Azure. I would probably opt for the Demi Ben because, like I said, you don't have to worry about. Um, you know what? Never mind. I changed my mind. I would do the monogram because a lot of people out there have had problems with the Demi Ben, the treated leather actually cracking. So uh, if you're going to use it every day, it might show a little bit more wear on the treated leather, more so than the Vaquetta uh, on the monogram. So I would probably have to go for the monogram. And then as you use it, as it patinas, uh, it'll be a lot more, it, it would show, you'd be, you'd have to be a little bit less careful with it. So I would save for the monogram unless you are crazy like I am and you do Demi Azor. <laughs> uh, but great question. Okay. Uh, Disney Mark, my very good friend, uh, Mark, uh, do you intend on buying any of the celebrating monogram range? Uh, you know what? I do not. I don't have, uh, I can appreciate how beautiful the bags are and the fact that Louis Vuitton collaborated with such uh, talented artists. I, I think that is fantastic, but 
for myself, for my personal collection. Uh, I, I don't see myself purchasing any of those bags. Uh, and actually one of my very good friends here on YouTube as well as Instagram, uh, Bobby loves LV or Bobster 92 on Instagram. He just got one from his parents and, uh, it is, it looks, it looks great. I was actually at first hesitant on the bag, but the more he shows it on Instagram, I absolutely love it. It looks great. I would never purchase it for myself. I tend to stick to more classic pieces. Uh, I don't like to, um, I don't like to get away from those for whatever reason. I just, I tend to stick to the to the normal, <laughs> to the normal bags. Not saying that that's not normal, but, uh, they are definitely a collector's piece. And I think that if I was to get something such as the celebrating monogram, I would, I wouldn't want to use it. I would literally just leave it on my shelf and use it as an artistic piece, uh, that I would be able to show off and not use and just have it sit there. So the fact that I would be spending that much money on a bag that I would not use, that's the main reason why I would not purchase one. So, uh, great question though. And then, uh, the very last question, which is St. Tropez for me. Uh, when I use my handbags, I feel that people are judging what I do. I know people talk about my bags when I walk by and I feel foolish. Help. Well, um, you know what? Honestly, people, there are people out there who are going to judge no matter what. Uh, even if you do all the good in the world, it doesn't matter. Someone's always going to be there to try to bring you down. And uh, I say, Bring your head up high and wear what you want proudly. Yes, the items that we're talking about here are more than likely, are, are usually luxury goods. And uh, whether it's a $4,000 bag, a $2,000 bag, or a $20 wallet, it doesn't matter. Do whatever makes you happy. People are going to talk about you. It, I mean, it's going to happen. I have had people uh, ask me, they say, why would you spend such a ridiculous amount of money on a bag when it's just a bag? Why not spend it on something a little bit more substantial? And, uh, you know, to each their own, everybody's entitled to their opinion. If they want to buy something with their money that, uh, makes more sense to them, then go for it. Uh, I personally, it is my money and I will do what I see fit with it. I don't, uh, I really don't care what other people have to say as far as that goes. And I'm not trying to be mean whatsoever, but I have noticed that a lot of people, um, a lot of people, especially on Instagram have been telling me, you know, what do I do? What do I do? My so-and-so is going to judge me. Don't worry about the judgment. Like I said, people are going to judge no matter what you do. If it's the, like the best thing in the world, they're going to judge you for it. If it's the worst thing in the world, they're going to judge you. So I say you wear your handbag, your shoes, your jewelry, your lipsticks, whatever you want, you wear it proudly. Cause just think about it. Think about all of the hard work that you do to be able to purchase this bag or another spin on it. Think about all the hard work that the person who gifted you the item had to work. They, they wanted to work. They worked hard for their money. They bought you something that they thought that you would like. So I say, wear it, wear it without judgment, wear it proudly. I mean, you, in another thing that people say is, you know, that it's, or I know that it's fake. I know that it's fake. I really don't care. I know it's not fake, so it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean as far as I don't necessarily care what other people think. I don't, uh, I have gotten a lot of judgment when I was uh, growing up. Uh, I got bullied quite a bit and uh, I'm not ashamed to say it. It has made me uh, really think about the type of person that I want to be as an adult. And, uh, that's, that's another thing that someone else asked me about bullying. They said, you know, I, I get bullied because I like these luxury brands and I get bullied because of this and I get bullied because of that. And, uh, it's, it's funny to me because sometimes we let bullies really dictate how we feel and how we think but why would I give someone that much credit that's going to put me down like that? Why would I give someone credit to, to continue for me to feel that way? You know what I mean? So if a bully's going to sit there and say something nasty to you or they're going to sit there and judge you, why would I listen to them? 
there's no reason to listen to them. You know what I mean? Because I think that if they're, ju- if they're bullying you, if they're judging you, in a sense, it's almost a form of jealousy. Be it what it is, some people might say it's not jealousy. I think it is because I, it, it, in the end, it doesn't matter. Do what makes you happy. Wear your items proudly. Do what, if you buy a car that's a little bit on the more expensive side, good for you. You worked hard for it. So I say, you know what? Don't, don't feel foolish. Be very excited that you, that you were able to buy something that really truly made you happy. As materialistic as it could be, it doesn't matter because your happiness is the one that import, that is the most important. So I leave you guys with that question, but St. Tropez for me, that is a great question. Thank you so much for, for all the wonderful questions from you guys. And hopefully you guys enjoy this Minx Monday. I'm back into the swing of things. I really missed doing this video last week because my voice is a little on the horse side. <laughs> but anyways, that is all I have for you guys. And I hopefully will see you later this week. I don't know if I will. Um, I'm supposed to be throwing our company party, our holiday party. I know we have it after the holiday. Go figure. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be a little preoccupied with that. But hopefully I'll come on here and um, I'll give you guys a... Uh, I don't know. I might do some other random kind of video. You never know. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for hanging out with me for 26 minutes and I will see you later on. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.